You're listening to Shift Everything, a podcast by West 40, where we challenge the status quo in education. I'm your host, Chris Coffey. In our continuing discussions about supporting newcomers to Chicago, this episode of Shift Everything will focus on how many of the recently arrived migrants, many of them from Venezuela, are being housed and fed. ShyCare is a nonprofit organization that cares for the unhoused across the Chicagoland area. In addition, ShyCare is providing food and essentials to the migrant families. In fact, they're serving thousands of meals each week. Now, here's the connection to West 40. ShyCare has been generously donating an allowance each week for West 40 to feed our families. This consists of 12 pans of freshly prepared hot food. And a colleague tells me that this food has been a blessing to West 40 families. That same colleague here at West 40 says Shy Care is all about dignity, hope, and fairness. For this episode of Shift Everything, we're joined by Bashir Hassan, director of Shy Care, and Faraz Sardharia, board member of Shy Care, who has led the initiative to assist many of the migrants arriving from Venezuela. Bashir and Faraz, thanks for joining Shift Everything. Our pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thanks for for us, I understand that you guys have been very busy lately. You're getting publicity on the local media, and that's primarily through your efforts to support the newcomers, uh, ma- mainly arriving from Venezuela. Is that correct? Correct. We've been uh, we have a migrant uh, a migrant response team that we've been uh, leading and providing support meals and essential living items to those that uh, absolutely need them all over the city of Chicago, including the migrants. A recent news article, I saw that your restaurant was serving a lot of food, mostly pasta to the, the, these, the newcomers. Uh, how are you able to do this? Is this a lot of volunteering? Is this a lot of donations that's helping to put this together? Could you kind of put that into perspective for our listeners? Yeah. No, uh, to be clear, we our goal is to support local businesses as well as provide these meals. So some days it could be pastas. Most days it's uh, culturally appropriate meals that um, that are liked by the crowd we're serving. Right. Um, we put it together by supporting uh, building a plan and supporting the local businesses in a program that's uh, backed by the Greater Chicago Food Dis- Depository. And we work with 16 different restaurants, including myself, my restaurants. And we put together a meal program for all of us to be able to have our, our volunteer base pick up and deliver to uh, the encampments and tents all over the city, including police departments. Bashir, could you talk about Shy Care when you guys started? And what is it that has led you to... Uh, support the newcomer families, especially in recent months, due to the surge of the migrants coming up on the buses from Texas? Absolutely. Um, so ShyCare started in March of 2020. So right around when the pandemic uh, uh, hit is when, when ShyCare began. And it was really just by chance that that happened. But it was uh, the timing was actually perfect because during the, the, the pandemic, especially at the very beginning of the pandemic, um, the entire world went uh, on lockdown effectively. And so our unhoused brothers and sisters, some of the uh, uh, some of the services that they would have access to were no longer available. Um, shelters that normally house a certain number of people also had, you know, uh, less capacity because of spacing and whatnot. And so um, it was very opportune for Shikir to be on the streets serving our unhoused brothers and sisters with meals. And, and we realized that, you know, there's a greater need given everything that was going on in the world at that time. And so um, if you fast forward to now, um, you know, if we look at like March or April of 2023, um, we saw another crisis, right? This is the, the migrant crisis is truly a humanitarian crisis and it's at the, the doorstep of, of, you know, Chicagoans. And so as Chicagoans, you know, we, we felt that we need to support them in the, the best way that we can. And with the experience that we had serving the unhoused, it, it you know, it kind of just replicated itself and, uh, you know, and we were able to do the same thing with, with the uh, migrants. We started seeing many of them um, at some of the ten encampments that we, we serve at normally. And, and when we started seeing that, we realized that, You know, there's really no difference between someone who's unhoused that's from Venezuela or someone that's been living in Chicago that's unhoused. Um, At the end of the day, a human is a human to us. And 
making sure that we provide them with the best food that we can and and take care of their needs is is kind of top of mind for our organization. Are you getting a lot of volunteers that are helping you out? I mean, without volunteers, is this even possible? Yeah, so, you know, we, we're a volunteer-based organization. We've, our, our program was built on volunteers and people that just care. Um, and we've seen tremendous support. Um, you know, I started with ShyCare as a volunteer. Um, when, I, when, I, when I found out that, that they're serving the unhoused at some of the places I used to go to, uh, Chef Faraz, you know, same thing. He started volunteering with Shai Care, became a board member because he was so passionate about what we're doing. Um, so we're truly a grassroots movement and we continuously see more and more people interested in the work that's being done. Um, and 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 our our network continues to grow with more and more volunteers that, that are willing to help. Faraz, when you deliver these meals to the the families and the people who might be staying outside police stations and places like that what is the reaction that you get it's important to to provide the support in the the little moment that we have right uh the reactions are full of smiles you know it's it's a it's um it's a sad feeling to be able to go there and provide the meals um although we're very helpful it you know i have children of my own uh, as a parent, it's, um, it's the last place I would want my children to be at. So the reaction that we can capture in those 30 seconds when we're providing a nice meal, a warm meal that they're used to, you know, we also do kids' meals such as chicken nuggets and fries on certain days. Um, we, we, we try our best to capture that smile on a consistent basis. And that's what drives us, right? Um, it's an overwhelming experience uh, doing this every day of the week, providing thousands of meals and organizing the back end to support. However, because of that smile, when you go and deliver, it keeps you going. Could you talk a little bit more about the food, the ingredients that you receive to make this happen? I understand that you mentioned that there is a partnership with the people that provide the food across the well, area. Could you just talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, to be clear, we, uh, our partnership with the Greater Chicago Food Depository is off the program that supports the local businesses in the city of Chicago and provides a, a variety of meals to um, to our new neighbors. So the the meal itself is ordered by uh, ordered through for, from from our partners, at least is ordered through a reliable source such as Cisco uh, and Gordon Food Services. And those products get delivered to the restaurants. Some restaurants, certain restaurants uh, in the south side of Chicago, in the west side of Chicago, and in the north side of Chicago, right? So uh, we ask our partners to uh, be mindful of uh, having the proper suppliers. Uh, and from there, we prepare the meals. And the support in terms of uh, financial backing comes from the Greater Chicago Food Depository that uh, helps us pay for these meals for our new neighbors. And Bashir, can you tell me if it's been a challenge finding the funding to help all in all with uh, ShyCare's efforts to assist the newcomers? Early on, I think there was a bit of a challenge. Um, however, you know, as, as uh, Faraz mentioned, the Greater Chicago Food Depository has become a, a tremendous partner of ours. And so our worry has moved away from how do we do this? How do we fund this? Um, to just making sure that we do what we do best and that that's making sure that we provide quality meals to um those who are in need and for us can keep me honest here but since the beginning of july we've had the the financial support of the greater chicago food depository for our migrant efforts and so what that's allowed us to do is really focus on what our primary goal is and uh, making sure that that meals are being prepared that we'd like to eat, eat ourselves. So, you know, our, our philosophy is we're only going to serve something that we would put on our, on our own table. And we want to make sure that it's getting to the places that, that it needs to get to. Um, so, you know, all in all, I think the, the financial side of things have definitely gotten better because of the support of Greater Chicago Food Depository. I'll also just caveat this by saying that, you know, we, we serve the unhoused and that program hasn't stopped. You know, that program continues. That's where we started. And our, you know, we're continuously looking for funding and support on that front so that we can continue to, to help those who are in need 
whether you know they're migrants or otherwise. And the weather's going to start getting colder soon. How busy are you right now trying to help find roofs to have over the heads of uh, many many of our unhoused? Yeah, so you know we we're a boots on the ground organization, and obviously when when the temperatures get colder, we 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 see it we see it firsthand, and we we try to do our best to get folks off the streets into uh, into shelters, into hotels, wherever whatever we can do. You know, we'll we'll try to help out. Most often, that's you know partnering with other organizations that focus on getting people off of the streets, particularly in times when when it's super cold. And you know, in previous years, we've seen that you know a tent encampment, for instance, of like 15, 20 people, they will get moved off the streets at least for that that temporary time period because it is cold and put into a hotel. That's something that you know we help in doing as well when we get the opportunity to. But obviously, when it gets cold, it's it's tough to see someone on the streets. Um, we we provide them with you know we provide people that are living on the streets with warm essentials uh, so that they can at least bear the cold uh, during during the the winter season. Could either of you talk about what the migrants are saying as far as what their biggest needs are besides food and clothing and shelter? Uh, a recent episode of our podcast kind of focused on education, how many came up here looking for an education for their kids. Are Is that happening? Are people getting the support or are some getting discouraged? Just kind of paint that picture of, of, of what the overall situation is as far as what you can see. Yeah. You know, overall, they ask for jobs, right? Um, they're having a very hard time getting jobs in, in the current process and the predicament that they're in. Uh, in order for this to move, you know, we, we would hope that they can have opportunities to have employment um, as soon as possible so they can provide for their families. You know, the, some bring their children here to have better education. Chai Care is an organization. Our goal is to be as, as socially invested as we can. And many of that includes uh, being, being at the forefront and on the grounds and providing what they need and listening and communicating. And, you know, I, I hear, I hear, you know, education is very important for the children and, that's what they're coming for. But more importantly, in order for them to kind of really get on track, they need jobs, right? And so, you know, we take it upon ourselves to try to, try to provide as much support as we can uh, in the social experience as well, because it's not just here's a meal. It's it's more than just that. Shy Care is a hyper-locally focused organization on the city of Chicago and those in it, right? So we we would really like to see them this whole process kind of moved to the place of, obviously they're living in police stations, right? So they, uh, it's because of lack of housing and, you know, little by little they're decompressing and it's, it's getting better than before. And, you know, we're hoping uh, throughout all of this is just, just being the right side, you know, being the right side of history, provide the support in the best way we can as an organization by the standards that we stand by. And how could the public help if they hear this, if they see you guys on the news and they say, you know what, I want to I want to make a difference too. what is the best thing that they can do to support uh, organizations like yours? Yeah. Um, you know, Chai Care being an all volunteer organization and run on uh, fundraising and donations. We're, we're you know, we, we provide so much essential living items that it would it would be really helpful, if, you know, you know, if you have a few bucks to donate to the cause, it goes directly to the cause. Uh, you can you can view that and join us on volunteer as well to our uh, on our routes uh, on a daily basis at shy care.org for more information. And Bashir, could you uh, talk about your partnership with West 40? Uh, we support many of our families with meals and you help make that happen. Yeah. You know, um, what the, the West 40 partnership is one of the, I would say, one of the success stories that we found over the past year. And, you know, it really started with a, a volunteer, a shy care volunteer who connected uh, Pam to me. Um, and, uh, and Pam, who also now volunteers with shy care. So it's, you know, it's full circle, just helping, you know, helping each other out. Um, so he connected me to Pam probably a little over a year ago. And, and, you know, I learned about the program and, right away we're like you know what let's do this um let's help out families who are in need so when you think about like the progression of someone that may live on the streets to someone that 
is in the shelter to someone that has a house. We, we find that regardless of where they're at, there's still food insecurities, whether they're for someone that's on the street or some or for families who are facing food insecurities in our city. And so for us to be able to help out a family with a meal uh, through, you know, partnerships with West 40 or other organizations, it really makes a difference because we, we then see that we can help provide support um, for a spectrum of individuals, regardless of where they're at. Because we, we recognize and understand that uh, food insecurities aren't just, you know, for people that are on the streets. It can be anywhere. It can be a family where it appears that the family is, everything is fine, when in reality, they are struggling. And so for us to be able to provide them with quality food is, is something that we're very proud of. And we, we love the partnership that we have with West 40. Um, you know, just as, you know, given that Thanksgiving is right around the corner, we're providing um, 100 turkeys through a, another partner of ours, Zakat Chicago, um, and and those turkeys are going to be picked up by Pam and the the team for the uh, families. You know, mm-hmm. so it truly is a, a full circle kind of experience. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just being able to partner with 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 West Forty, having Pam volunteer, seeing people on the streets, and and providing support to them, and Shycare being able to support the families that are within the the West Forty program. And partnerships and relationships are so important to this organization. Uh, just like West 40, you know, we have such great supporters such as Zakat Chicago and Islamic Relief and so many partners of ours that <laughs> have provide, provided hygiene kits. Zakat Chicago is providing nearly 250 turkeys for us to distribute, as well as Vani Patisserie who's providing 150 pies. So partnerships are extremely important. And those partnerships can result in homes and a place to sleep, and a, a hot meal, which can go a long way. Well, Faraz Sardharia and Bashir Hassan of Shy Care, thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Shift Everything. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for listening to Shift Everything. We want to hear your thoughts and bold ideas and share your educational accomplishments. To join the conversation, email us at shifteverything at west40.org.